Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to this session, even though it's almost beer time. <laughs> I thought the pressure would be off because no one would come, so I'm really glad to see you all. Um, I am the Director of Research and Development for Bonnier, um, which is Sweden Sweden's largest media company, but in the US, uh, I'm the director. And um, we're working on a lot of interesting experiments, especially with the quantified self lately, which is how um, we started looking into this area of hyperconnectedness. So, you know, throughout the day today, we've seen a lot of interesting uh, things, and we've been talking a lot about lots of versions of connectivity, the Internet of Things, the quantified self, augmented reality. Um, and today we're going to talk about the choices that we make in this session about exactly how much technology and media um, we, we should be consuming and, um, you know, what we're going to do in the future when we're completely connected and it truly becomes ubiquitous. So the question, I guess, is how connected can we be? Should we be this connected? Cup of tea. Fill kettle with two hot plates, one PG tips tea bag in a clean mug. Good. Now get the skim milk from the refrigerator. That's probably enough of that. <laughs> it's an extremely dystopian vision of a future in which it's so hyperconnected that it's boring and it's a little bit nightmarish to have so many advertisements and so much idle chatter and the girl from Ipanema just making it all the more boring. Um, <laughs> so what's the right amount of connectedness for today's world and exactly how connected do we want to be in tomorrow's world? Um, this is the definition of connected, uh, that we should be brought into contact so that a real or notional link is established and joined together so as to provide access and communication, which has been the same thing that we've done for millennia. But today, we're connected by default to our social networks, our finances and locations, and the online av availability of our data has become the norm. And to be connected means to opt out. And we're heading for a future in which everything is connected. Our data from household devices, transportation networks, our shopping habits, and even our own bodies are online, as we'll see in a minute when Dave Asprey, the next speaker, comes up. There are some amazing benefits with all this connectivity, but we're starting to have to make some choices. Default connectivity means that we need to be keenly aware of what we're sharing. We need to know how sharing can benefit us and how it can hurt us. What data should we keep private? How do we filter the fire hose of information? That's become sort of a catchphrase these days, but there's such a huge amount of information coming at us that we need to learn how to focus on what's truly relevant. Our first speaker, Dave Asprey, is what I have been calling an extreme self-tracker. Uh, he's going to talk about his own experience of hyperconnectivity. He began recording a diverse array of metrics about his body in order to analyze and improve his health. And through tracking these metrics and sharing them online, he went through a process of trial and error with feedback from medical experts and ended up isolating the right metrics for healing himself. And Dave's going to walk us through his experience as a self-tracker and what the sharing of such data can mean from a privacy perspective. Because in addition to his biohacking activities, Dave is also a senior vice president at Trend Micro, an online security company. 
So um, we got to this point uh, at Banya R&D about talking uh, about hyperconnectivity when we started to investigate the quantified self. This is a big uh, trend that, especially in Silicon Valley, where everyone is sort of type A and working to improve themselves and optimize their performance in lots of areas. People are talking about this. And there have been a slew of new devices that have come on the market within the past 12 to 18 months. Um, the Fitbit, which is the one uh, on the left, which allows you to measure your calories. Um, the Jawbone Up, that new bracelet at the bottom that was just released a couple weeks ago that is going to be a competitor with a beautiful iPhone interface. And the Green Goose, which is uh, a series of micro sensors that are very cheap that you can put on things all over your home and track uh, how you're using them. Like if you're not sure if, chi if your children are brushing their teeth long enough, you can put one on their toothbrush and see if they're really brushing their teeth for two minutes. Um, Tim Ferriss, who is pretty famous for his self-tracking activities, he just wrote a book that has become very popular called The Four Hour Body, says that as soon as the next 12 to 24 months, people will have to opt out of self-tracking rather than opt in, much in the same way that we're starting to have to opt out of our location data, which is automatically applied to our photographs in Flickr. And, you know, we, we have to decide whether we want people to know where we are. Soon we're going to have to decide if we want people to know how many calories we're burning. Um, so <laughs> the connected body is a really interesting area. Um, doctors and scientists are already t testing tiny sensors that can circulate in the bloodstream to monitor conditions like the health of your cardiovascular system or to track and treat cancer. So a future scenario might be one in which a nanobot traveling through your bloodstream notices an excess of white blood cells and pings your doctor to report the fact that you are developing an infection. Your doctor then approves a prescription which is automatically filled at your pharmacy, billed and sent to your home. This sounds like science fiction, but actually the technology to do this is already here. And um, all it takes is to sort of put these things together, which could happen in the next five years, and then the social acceptance of sharing enough data that allows you to make these connections um, could happen within the decade. So on the one hand, of course, it would be amazing to get advanced warning and proactive treatment of diseases and to be able to monitor our health and tweak and make changes before you know, major issues appear, but the scenario becomes frightening when you consider the potential for your personal data to be hacked or for the system to malfunction. The question will be, of course, whether the benefits of tracking and sharing health information can outweigh the dangers. So that's another area that Dave is going to talk to us about from the perspective of online security. And then finally, at the end of our session, we're going to talk with Susan Mousehart, the author of The Winter of Our Disconnect, which uh, was just released in Sweden this week, I believe. Um, it's a really interesting book. Susan is a very connected person, and she has three connected teenagers who just live and breathe uh, online media. And she decided that she would see what happens if she took everybody offline for six months. And these sorts of things, you know, give us a template for making decisions about uh, how much media we all should be consuming. <laughs>